Hello and welcome to the musical show. I am sitting on this very unprofessionally. I don't care. <laughs> um, the show where I blabber on about music for around 25 minutes, half an hour. But, you know, I reviewed, I've reviewed so many albums this week. And, um, yeah. So this is probably going to be a fairly long one. So I do need to get through these album reviews fairly quick. So enough blabbering on. You know what this is going to be. Going to look at the albums that released last week, a few others, because I just want to. And then I'm going to look to the albums that released tonight, well, today. And I will, and because the last episode contained an album from February, so I'll go through my three best of February and the three worst of February. Right, let's go, because I need to go now. Yeah. Um... Um, 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 um. Let's start off with a updated album score. Skrillexes don't get too close. For me, it's even more of a dud of an album than it already was at a 6.9 out of 10 rating. And Bybee did ruin those songs with their shitty lyrics and shitty voice. She's so shit. <laughs> so yeah, I already don't like her at all. And while, because it's more consistent than Quest for Fire and there's less horrible songs, I would recommend Quest for Fire more because it's more of an experience than a more fun listen. This, while it was technically better, it was better because it was more so-so than painfully bad in some areas. This was just a dud. Wouldn't recommend this to everyone. Save your time. 6.5 out of 10 now. Decreased by 0.4. Next up, an album I missed that I felt like going to. Kalela's Raven. I've heard nothing but positive things on um, the music side of TikTok, so I thought I'd give it a go. And yeah, it was a damn good album, just missing out of entering my top three of the year so far. But definitely in the top five. The sounds this album has with its ambient elements and sometimes poppy and R&B elements, merging together in some songs, and some songs just being super ambient. There's no real, like, pop bangers in here, though, which I think is a good thing, because it would have been a bit weird with the sound of the album for it to have pop bangers. But, um, yeah, some songs take you on a journey. And, well, all songs take you on a journey in this album, especially with all the sounds and beautiful moments it has. And there's even some that, like, I think could appeal to a more mainstream audience. And some wouldn't say, like, people who exclusively listen to the fucking radio would enjoy it. But, like, I think if people wanted to experiment slightly with their music taste, they might take a few songs away here. But trust me, slightly. There's nothing like super poppy about this, but there's some songs with like some pop sensibilities I do feel. However, lyrically, it has its it has its weaknesses, and the first and last song sound exactly the same. I think that was intentional, but it doesn't work for me because it's just stupid and lazy. For me, a 9.4 out of 10. Here's a random arm review. Remember the Star Power mixtape that I mentioned um last week. It actually released years ago, but it was just like re-released onto streaming services on last week. But um, I found out after I listened to it, so I thought I'm just going to review it anyway, because why shouldn't I? <laughs> when I've already mentioned it, it would be a bit random to be like, oh yeah, this is a mixtape by the way, I've already listened to it, but I can't be bothered reviewing it. Like I've listened to it, so I'll review it. Enough about blabbering on, because I need to not do that today, because um, I've got a lot to review, and um, a lot to talk about. So yeah, I was wrong about that. However, it shows Wizard is Prime, the amazing beats throughout, great features, and largely good rapping performances. Sure, with it having 23 songs, it gets a bit boring. Sure, some songs are predictable, and sure, lyrically it's repetitive. He never stops mentioning how he hustles. <laughs> but still, it's a fun listen, and the songs in the own are all fantastic, and I don't think there's a single stip, a skip. While there's, despite some songs being far better than others, they're all, like, good. And it has to be one of the best albums ever made, with, like, an absolutely ridiculous amount of tracks, like, 20 plus. 8.3 out of 10. Although I don't think any album is going to be not boring throughout when it has um, 23 songs in it, let's be honest. Even if every song was good, like in Wiz Khalifa, it got a bit boring. Right, enough talking about Wiz Khalifa. Let's look at the 10 albums, because Young Nudie dropped on Wednesday and I decided to review that today. I probably should have mentioned it on a community tab. 
thinking about it. Oh well, little surprise. Um, yeah, 10 albums I listen to, I'm going to review right now. Let's get this over with ASAP, because that's what I need to do. I thought it was going to be. Anyway, first up, Russ Millions. I know I've not pointed the route, but, you know, I'm going to point at the thing now for, like, maybe just this album. You never know. First off, um, it's already there. Russ Millions, one of a kind. The samples aren't terrible and every song doesn't sound like the same. There is the odd really good song. However, there's also the odd absolutely horrendous song. Basically, these, it's like a sandwich. It's like an insanely bad sandwich. It's got, like, mm, a few decent little sprinkles of ingredients. A mostly pretty meh sort of base, and then some bits were absolutely disgusting. Shove a bit of bread, and you've got Russ Millions. When it's not really good or really bad, it's just a painfully boring dud. And as bad as a painfully boring dud could be. 3.6 out of 10, one of the worst albums of the year so far. Spoiler alert for it in the top three list of February. Anyway. Next up, Young Nudies Goobo. Gumbo. And I think I've got the unpopular opinion here with how much I don't really like this. Had some bangers and some great songs, there's no denying that. But the bad outweighs the good. And what is bad is really bad. Portobello is one of the worst songs of the year. Terrible beats that are boring most of the time, some piss poor rapping performances in there, and some terrible mixing. There's nothing redeemable about a lot of the songs. And I'm not eating at this establishment, I'll just fuck off to MF Doom. If you want a concept album on food, just stick to him. This is just bad. I would recommend this to very few people unless you really like trap. I don't know how many of you do. I don't know how many of you are even asked about the show. I don't know how many of you are still watching, if anyone. 3.9 out of 10. Moving on to Don Tolliver's Love Sick, which is the definition of mid. Got some really good tracks, i.e. Honeymoon, and some really bad ones, i.e. Private London. However, those are few and far between, and the rest of it is just insanely mid and nothing special and just ill. Don't waste your time. This is... Probably one of the more disappointing albums I've heard this year, and I'm not even going to ask listening to the like four deluxe tracks because what I've heard sounds absolutely horrendous, and I don't review deluxe albums anyway, so why should I? Five out of ten, exactly, painfully mid. Next up, Yeet Afterlife. Decent no first half, terrible second. Has a load of bangers, has a fuck ton of duds. Doesn't have a talking Ben feature. Terrible. One of those bloated, messy, long albums. But he does it better than most do. Even if it's objectively horrendous, I suppose, if you're talking about a musical sense. But, you know, music is about how it sounds and not, like, what it's like musically. And, like, music theory and all that shit. I don't care about that. I just want to know if it sounds good. If it sounds good, it good. I don't give a shit about the theory. I don't think... I think I'd think every Yeet song was terrible and every sing and his entire discog was like a minus one out of ten, which I so obviously don't because I do these in ascending order of rating. And the last album I gave, I gave a five out of ten. This is a 5.3 out of ten. Moving on. Next up is Logic's College Park. College, oh my god. College Park. The skits at the end of every single song did get annoying, but most of them were actually pretty decent. His flow did go a bit spiritual, lyrical, miracle, individual, which is obviously a terrible and obviously stolen flow. But it was decent. The production was terrible and boring for Logic in some songs, but was largely decent. The RZA feature was horrible, but the features were largely decent, especially Seth MacFarlane. Bro went off! More people need to appreciate the fact that he can sing. I already knew he could, because of course he can. Um, and, yeah, I think you can already see what this album's like. Not the best thing I've ever heard, and heavily flawed, but mostly decent in pretty much every way. It's just decent. Decent, decent, decent. It's a decent 6.8 out of 10, which is pretty decent, which is a pretty decent rating. Next up, you got Tink, Thanks for Nothing, and yeah, I've hardly found a gem. Songs are mostly decent, yes. I need to stop using that fucking word. 
but she does nothing, like, at all, that her other more successful counterpart in her genre already do. Half of the songs just sound like if Scissor made a fucking Untitled Unmastered. Fun album, but nothing special. And you can sort of see why what she hasn't broken to the mainstream, because she does nothing interesting, and she doesn't have anything interesting about her fucking sound. 6.9 out of 10, though, which is probably the best rating you could get, even if it's technically, I suppose, not, because it's not a 10. And there's one, two, three, four albums that came out last week better than it. Next up, it's the EP. It's the Babatron. Out on Bond. Sure, he only has one flow, and it does get old. However, there was only five songs here, so it didn't really hear. The lyrics were fun. E. I just put... Um, I'm probably going to spoil the rating, but oh well. You see fun E in my notes. Hopefully I didn't spoil the rating. If I did, then boom. I might as well not announce it, but I will. Now, pretty much every gimmick worked. The mixing on Certified Trapper's feature, however, was poor, and it is far from perfect, because it's a Baby John album, and nothing he'll ever release is perfect, I think almost intentionally. However, it's an enjoyable, fun collection of songs. And there was, and Confixing was, the fixing, the mixing, for fuck's sake, was largely excellent. And some of the beats were really, really good. For me, just a fun EP, 7 out of 10. Exactly. Next up, we have got the late AKA with his posthumous album, Mass Country. And yeah, rappers die too much. We've lost some good ones recently. Coolio, Take Off, him, and that's naming a few. Sad how many deaths still happen in the rap industry and how toxic it still is. On to the album. The hooks can be a bit hit or miss. And they're there, Eric. What the fuck was that? And the lyrics got, I can't talk at the moment, the lyrics got corny often, and there were some really bad features here and there. The beats, while occasionally predictable, were mostly fire, and there were some bangers, and the second half was largely fantastic. Diary anxiety to the sheer foreshadowing were pretty much in the lyrics. Has to be one of the saddest musical experiences I've ever had. And Diary anxiety on its own is a fantastic track anyway. This is an album I'd 100% recommend. And it's just sad that we've lost someone this good. It's sad when we lose any rapper, when are you? But when you lose someone who is actually really fucking good, it just hits that tiny bit more. 7.6 out of 10, really good. Next up, we've got Gorillas with Cracker Island. They don't fucking miss. Excellent instrumentally, aside from the drums, which are pretty much the same in every single song. And I love the slower sound. In a lot of this, and pretty much a lot of Gorillaz's discography, let's be honest. Damon's voice were on point. Damon's voice, well, Damon's vocals, so I pretty much was right. Damon's vocals were, were... Why can't I fucking speak? Damon's vocals were on point throughout, as always, especially on Silent Running and Baby Queen. However, some of the album does seem like boring pop in terms of structure. Like Silent Running, but that song's beautiful anyway, so it doesn't affect it too much. And New Gold is really not that good. Booty Brown was horrendous, and even the chorus for Tame Impala was pretty average. And Gorillaz were not there. Terrible, well, it's not terrible, but a pretty mid mess of a song. But there are some fantastic songs in there, such as Possession Island, Hot Take, I know, and Skinny Ape. And even the flawed songs were still really, really good. This is still a fantastic album, even with its huge flaws, and New Gold being min as fuck. And super disappointing. 8.6 out of 10. Next up, and the best album of this week, Gracie Abrams with Good Riddance. I had high expectations that it still somehow exceeded them. This album had one of the best first halves I've heard in any album in quite some time. However, it does fall off a bit in the second half, and some songs overstay their welcome, and the chorus in um, Amelie was really not that good. Still, amazing debut album, and I wonder how far she'll go. And you can defo here like the Phoebe Bridges and Taylor Swift influences in it. If you like those two artists, you'll probably like that. And there was even a hyper popish song in there for somewhere. But yeah, Chris Abrams, defo a prospect and defo someone to look out for. This was fantastic. And it's a 9.2 out of 10. Right, those are all of the albums that came out last week reviewed. Now let's look at the albums that have released that I'm going to mention now. I am listening to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, hang on, Uno, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so yeah, just six albums this week that I'm listening to, but I'm going to mention a seventh. Dreamville's 
Creed 3, the soundtrack. I don't listen to soundtrack albums, but you've got songs with the likes of Jid, Big Sean, SG, J. Cole, Larry Lennox, Blast, Westside Boogie, Eighth Gang, and uh, tons of others. It's uh, a whole record label, isn't it? But, um, yeah, if you're interested in more Dreamville and um, more J. Cole, you'll get J. Cole with um, Adonis Interludes and a... I'm pretty sure there's another one with J. Cole. Hang on just a second, is there not? Don't get much take on this. Just ignore my nasty ass foot. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not much take on, but there's a fair bit of jit in the likes of My Boy, which was released as a single, I'm pretty sure. And In The Room. So, yeah. There you go. Creed 3, the soundtrack with Dreamville, the record, J. Cole's record label. You might like that, but I don't really listen to soundtrack albums, so that one is one I am going to skip. Sorry, the seven albums that released last week. Um, I've just already listened to one of them. That one being Slow Ties Ugly. And if you've only heard positive things about it, spoiler alert, they are completely right. How high will the rating be? Find out. Either on my TikTok, probably in like... Well, that's Kendrick's. That should have been released on... Um, Father Stretch My Hands by Kanye. That Kendrick is. Anyway, find out in like a few hours on my TikTok. I'm sort of in my flop era at the moment, but um, yeah, if you have TikTok, go follow. Yeah, music reviews, 6 9 I review music. And you get to hear some of my takes on albums that released this week over the next few days that you before um, the, the um, show will come out. Basically, yeah. You'll hear, you'll see... Um, exclusive album reviews before you know i do this massive show basically yeah but yeah follow the tiktok for all that shit and um yeah ugly is really good how good do you think it is you can find out in a few hours there or next week or you can find out yourself by listening to it and see what you think <laughs> this is one thing i hope you find something you like from um, this show maybe one even if it's like one album at least you found something Giving you, like, ideas of shit to listen to if you want. Next up, Kali Uchis's Red Moon in Venice featuring Omar Apollo and Don Tolliver as well as Summer Walker. 15 songs, 43 minutes. Kali Uchis doesn't miss. I'm going to predict an 8. Next up, Michael Moore with album Burn. Has a Tone to Die feature, Kill Me Now. Collar, Windsor, Sarah Bar. Barthel, Fantagram, DJ Premier, Jackson Lee Morgan, Ellen, NLE, Chopper, Livingstone, Vic, Dags the Second, Charlie on a Friday, and Murray. 15 songs, 54 minutes long. It's going to be a fucking 2 out of 10. Kill me now. I'm not looking forward to that one at all. Shu Shu, spelled X-I-U, X-I-U, have dropped their new album titled... Did they drop it? Yet? No. Um... Title Ignore, no, that's not it. Ignore Grief. 10 songs, 42 minutes long. Shoo Shoo, they're meant to be pretty good. I'm going to say a 7 to be safe. And, yeah, but it could easily be higher. UFO361 has dropped his new album, Love My Life, featuring Offset, Gunner, 070 Shake, and Imhoff, Day to Love, The Late Lil Keed, Lil Got It, and OZ. 13 minutes, 34 minutes, 13 songs, 34 minutes even. Four. Four is my prediction. The Lathams dropped their sophomore album from nothing to a little bit more. 11 songs, 45 minutes long. I'm going to say a six or a seven. I'm going to say a seven to be nice because I know somebody who likes the Lathams. And this is the one I am looking forward to the least. Morgan Wallen, One Thing at a Time, featuring Eric Church, Hardy, and Ernest. 
36 fucking songs. One hour and 52 minutes. How am I going to get through this? I don't fucking know. All I know is that it's going to be a three. Kill me. So that is it for the albums that are releasing this week and the albums that released last week. Now for the top three best and top three worst of February. Just a reminder that the worst of January with a 2.2 out of 10 was Trippy Red's Mansion Music and the best of January with a now revised instead of a 10 out of 10, 9.2 out of 10 is Lil Yachty's Let's Start Here. However, top three in February all beat Lil Yachty. But you never know, that might change towards the end of the year when I do my end of year lesson shit. Third best album of February is Audio Didactic by Lance Skywalker with a 9.6 out of 10. Second best is Raise My 21st Century Blues with a 9.7 out of 10. But the best and best and album of the year so far is Catherine Polishek's Desire, I Want to Turn Into You, at, an, at again a 9.7 out of 10. But it is just that slight bit better than um, Ray's album. Whether that will change, I don't know. I, I'll probably have to re-listen to them both at some point. But um, yeah, there is that. And the top three waste of February was actually a pretty damn good month. The third waste was still a 4.7 out of 10. It was BK The Rulers Level 5 Part 1, 4.7 out of 10. Second worst was Young Nudie's Gumbo at a 3.9 out of 10, but the worst of February was Russ Millions' as One of a Kind with a 3.6 out of 10. That is it for the musical show. Um, you're all looking forward to listening to the Kali Ucha shit? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Got a lot to look forward to in the coming months. Ed Sheeran's just announced a new album. Utopia's still got a drop. Um, but, you know, we'll get to them when we get to them. So, are you all hyped for that shit? ASAP, Tyler, need to drop. Please drop. Rihanna, please drop. I know you're pregnant, but drop. <laughs> Frank Ocean, just drop. <laughs> but, um, yeah, hopefully I'll figure out how to talk by next episode. Thanks for watching, in a bit.